From WIS Politics in Madison, you're listening to Capital Chats. Hello, everybody. This is Kate Morton here with WISPolitics.com with my colleague Adam Kelnhofer to talk about an interview he did with Rock County Clerk Lisa Tolufson. So, Adam, can you tell us a little bit about that conversation? Yeah, Kate, I wanted to talk to Lisa because she has been at a lot of the Assembly Campaigns and Elections Committee hearings that I've also been attending where these bills have been going through. Um, And I wanted to talk about the bills that have been going through that committee because uh, a lot of them affect her work. And she's been closely familiar with how elections are run in Wisconsin. So let's just hear what she has to say. So hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Rock County Clerk Lisa Tolfson, who is actually also the co-chair of the Wisconsin County Clerks Association uh, Legislative Committee to talk about uh, a lot of, or at least a few of the election bills that are running through the legislature right now. There are a lot running through the legislature, but I wanted to get a clerk's perspective on some of the bigger bills and some of the more important items. So uh, welcome to the show, Lisa. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, I especially wanted to get your perspective because I've seen you in uh, pretty much every Assembly Campaigns and Elections Committee uh, hearing that I have attended in person. Um, So I know you're definitely involved in this, you know, at least paying attention to the legislative process. I know you've talked to uh, Chair Krug's office quite a bit. Um, but I think AB 567 is an interesting bill because it is very big. There's a lot of provisions in it. And uh, Democratic Governor Tony Evers has already signaled that he's likely to sign it. Um, what do you think of that bill? That's the uh, the bill that would allow clerks to start processing uh, absentee ballots before election night and other things. And other things, Yes. The the biggest piece of that bill is allowing clerks to do to start processing those absentee ballots the Monday before the the elect before election day, and currently our state doesn't start any processing until seven a.m. on election day, and if you have thousands and thousands of absentee ballots, you still have to go through all the processes, and if you can't start till seven in the morning, you have to keep going till you're done. So sometimes it's gonna take past 8 p.m. on election night. So those results will come in later. Our, the way the absentee ballot machines are, are at the central count locations, there's some municipalities that will send them all their absentees to one location to process. Those machines cannot stop and send out a result at 10 o'clock and then continue on. They have to wait till all of the absentees are processed before they can transmit. Or they can uh, deliver them to the county clerk. If we move the starting point to earlier, to Monday, they can start processing right away and then not do the tabulation until 8 p.m. on election night. And they can get those results out faster, which is what we all want. We would everyone would love to have the results at 8 p.m. It's still not going to be 8 p.m. because we still need to do tab. There's all kinds of checks and balances we do in that processing. So. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to be a lot sooner and it's going to be a lot more efficient and people aren't rushed. They can be more transparent uh, and diligent in what they're working on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're you're talking a lot about uh, uh, late uh, count or t- count totals coming out late on election night. We saw that we've seen that repeatedly a lot in Milwaukee, which you know has the most voters in any county of, of Wisconsin. So it makes sense they would have a lot more votes to count. Do you think this provision is that going to kind of speed that process up, so we're not seeing the the final count come out at two or three in the morning anymore? I, I believe it will, um, unless they have a machine issue or, or there's something else that's happening. Um, those results should be coming in a lot sooner. So we don't have to, you know, we have the people who say that it was this when I went to bed and now it changed. Well, it's going to get there sooner. But again, none of those ballots are going to be tabulated or totaled until after the polls close at 8 p.m. You still have to wait for that process to happen. Yeah, um, I thought it was actually interesting. There was a Republican uh, lawmaker in the assembly who raised some concerns. uh, Janelle Branch, she's a Republican of Menominee Falls. She was concerned that clerks are still going to maybe, you know, start counting votes early, uh, not understanding what this law does, that it only touches processing absentee ballots. 
Do you think that's a valid concern or are clerks kind of going to be on the same page here on this? So in April of 2020, a judge ordered us not to tabulate on election night. We reopened our machines and did any absentees and we didn't transmit and tabulate until Monday after the election at 4 p.m. The entire state did this. So yes, we can make this work. Um, there's a, there's protocols and lockdowns and codes that have to go in to tabulate those results. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of observers there making sure that this is going to happen correctly. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, are there any other major provisions in 567 that you think are worth pointing out? So there is a reporting provision that actually affects the entire state um, to report out the number of absentees at starting at nine o'clock on election night. Um, I think that's a, a good piece that's going to let everyone know, yes, this, this municipality still has a chunk of absentees to process. That's what we're waiting for. And it's going to give a little bit more transparency as to what we're working on. The Election Commission has for years already put out the number of absentees that municipalities have issued before the election. It's almost it's every day, like at 730, they put this posting on their website. Well, this is going to give you a little bit after the polls close. So it's a better way to track. OK, there's still these numbers coming in. We have to wait. So I think it's going to be a nice piece for people to look at this. It's going to be on the same website as our uh, where we report our results so people can see, OK, this municipality's not in where they're still working on absentees. So it's going to be a little bit more open so people can see what's happening. All right. Um, do you so a lot of in, in committee, I should say, uh, a lot of these bills and a lot of the lawmakers backing the bills are saying that they want to pass a lot of these um, election and campaign changes because they they're concerned. There was a lot of uh, concern about the last election and the integrity of elections. Do you think these um, bills, you know, all together or at least a handful of them that might get past Governor Evers desk, are they actually going to improve basically public relations with uh, election officials and, and increase the, the feeling of election integrity in Wisconsin? I think they will be getting that information out in a more timely, closer to the ones those polls close. It's going to be a lot easier. Um, and, and the fact that there's only four, I believe it's four states that don't start counting absentee ballots or start processing them before Election Day. We're, we're one of those last holdouts. And I really think this is going to be a huge, huge help for everyone who's everybody wants to know what the results are. So give us the options to get that done. This is going to be a huge help for that. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I, I actually want to stick with the 2020 election because a lot of these proposals come out of, you know, a potential or, or supposed issues with the, the 2020 election. Um, and I think one of those issues that a lot of clerks faced was, you know, threats uh, or intimidation efforts We've seen a lot of clerks leave their jobs because uh, they're just not feeling safe for various other reasons. Um, and I know there's another bill, AB 577, uh, that kind of creates some more protections for clerks, uh, adds them to whistleblower protections and um, some other protections. Do you think that's going to be effective in keeping clerks from leaving their jobs and maybe possibly drawing in more election workers? I'm not sure what if that's going to have as much effect as I, I would hoped. Um, and the reason is, is that it, it's kind of a it's it's hard to put into words, but it gives an it, it up increases the felony level if someone is harassing a clerk. Mm -hmm. But there's so much free speech out there and there's different ways I'm. I'm not sure if it's going to give clerks as much as they would have hoped for. And I, I, I'm, I'm trying to read it. It is a definite plus to know that our legislators understand what we're going through. And that is a huge plus. Um, and then to be able to go back on people who are creating those huge issues and a way to get that reported if there's a, a clerk now has that whistleblower protection if they're reporting an election 
irregularity, they have some protection against being retaliated against. And that's a huge plus too. Um, how that bill all is going to affect everything, I'm still trying to figure that out. But it is it is definitely a step in the right direction to help protect our election officials. If we don't do this, I don't see people um, sticking with we have had a lot of clerk turnover. Um, people have retired early. They, you know, they've had enough. Um, but I have to admit, we've had a lot of turnover in our county. Some people um, retired early. Um, some have um, switched to different municipalities. So they're learning that new municipality. You know, every municipality ranges in size. Our smallest is 600. Our largest is uh, over 60,000. So there's a lot of variation in sizes. Um, acknowledging how valuable they are is a huge part of this bill. Is there without them, without them, we can't run elections. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, are there any, you know, are, are there any efforts outside of the, the legislature that you think would maybe do more or, you know, work to address this um, kind of onslaught against, clerks, I guess, and election officials in general. Um, getting the knowledge out what how elections actually work, the the checks and balances that are in place, um, the amount of training that everyone needs to go through to work the polls. Um, we have we have observers that come to our polls that don't actually understand our state statutes. And I, I sometimes wish that they had some training so they knew what was going on. Uh, during the 2016 presidential recount, so I've been through seven recounts. That was the largest one I did. And I spent most of my time explaining, explaining state statutes to the observers. And there were actually a lot of them that were from out of, the, out of our state that were coming in. And I spent most of my time explaining how it actually works in Wisconsin. And part of that is I... I kind of wish all observers went through some training so that they understood. So they they sometimes can be intimidating at those polling locations um, because they're not trained. And they will say things it's like, yeah, that's not right. So I don't know if it's more of a, it's a training issue to make sure everyone understands the whole process and all the checks and balances that are in place. Hmm. Um, actually, uh, you mentioned observers. There's a bill that uh, would impact observers. It would kind of reduce the um, minimum and maximum feet that an observer can stand near a poll worker, you know, observing what they're doing. It would reduce the maximum distance to three feet from eight feet. The current uh, legislation is between three and eight feet, so it would re reduce it to the minimum, basically. Um, there were a lot of concerns raised in committee that this is maybe going to be kind of intimidating to a lot of election workers. Do you think, is that a valid concern or is there another way to kind of make it so that observers can observe without being intimidating? So I spoke to some clerks that um, the observer rule went into effect, the three to eight foot that's currently in place, that observer area, went into effect in 2013. Um, so those, that was right after the year we all had six elections. So we had the the recall elections and that's when it went into effect was right after the, the year after that. I spoke to a clerk who um, remembers when that wasn't in effect and she was at the poll. She had two poll workers working um, that were doing, were at the books, the poll books where there's, people are stating their name and address. And the observer was sitting, leaning over them almost like it was a parrot on their shoulder. And they came up to her and said, if you don't get that observer out of here, we are going to quit. So that is in within, the bill says within zero to three feet. That's the table. So they can't be on the side where the voter's going through. They're still, they're, they're basically on top of the, or right next to the election official. And my concern is that they have this observer badge on. They're not, they could be confused as being part of the, election crew that's actually working the election of the election officials the the poll workers um 
sometimes they can appear intim intimidating. Um, most observers aren't. It's it's just that's pretty close within zero to three feet of the table that you're working at. That's kind of on top of you, right next to you. And some of those polling locations are really small that they're trying to to move a lot of people through. I I'm concerned that it's a little bit much in a recount. Absolutely. They can be on the other side of the table, right up to the table, and they're watching everything we're reviewing. I don't have a problem with that. There's no voters there voting. My concern is at the polling location, someone feeling intimidated. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, we have time for one more question here. Um, do you think the 2024 election is going to be as tumultuous for clerks as the 2020 election was? I, I may have used the term a world of crazy before. Um, be, there's, there's a whole world that's changed since 2020. Uh, there's, there's a lot more social media. There's a lot more ways to get communications that aren't always verified. Um, and as we know, sometimes a misdirected information sometimes travels a lot faster than the pieces coming behind to correct it. And that can definitely add some anxiety to a clerk's job. I expect with our state, we're going to receive, I imagine in 2020, how much mail you got, how much text, everything that you received. And think about back in the Supreme Court race that we had this spring, how much mail did you get? How many, and that was a Supreme Court just for our state. We are a battleground state for the president and we are going to, I, I think it's gonna be double if not more, what, we, what we've seen in the past. Um, and that means we have a lot more questions that come towards the clerks, a lot more miscommunications. Um, it will not be boring next year at all. All right. Um, well, well, we'll definitely be watching for how these election bills, if, if any of them clear Eber's desk. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate having you on the show and uh, it, was, it was a pleasure. Thank you. All right, Adam, thanks for sharing that interview with us. In the meantime, if our listeners want to hear more about those election bills, they can head to our website at wispolitics.com. That's right, Kate. But for now, I'm Adam Kellenhofer. I'm Kate Morton. Thanks for tuning in to Wispolitics Capital Chats, brought to you by Spectrum. <laughs>